BMW M440i versus Audi S5. No matter if you're interested in the coupe or in the convertible, this comparison review will tell you everything you need to know about the BMW 4 Series against the Audi A5 in this very, very special version each. And also this comparison review has a deeper meaning to it because you've asked me, Thomas, can you bring us back the fun? Can you bring us back the joy? Sorry about that. I mean, what's happening in the automotive industry? Plug-in hybrids that are supposed to be sustainable, but they're really not. Then, capacitive buttons all over the place, screens from here to here. Then six cylinders being thrown away, only four cylinders, even three cylinders. Let's cut that BS just for a second and enjoy pure automotive feeling, beginning with the new BMW 4 Series with a huge front grille. Look at that really massive but i think you get used to it especially when you see it live and even more massive when you don't have a country where the number plate is mandatory right here san remo green is the color here for today and we have the headlamps which have a nice data running light LED standard optional even these adaptive laser lights with the blue accentuations whereas we have the turbo blue a typical thomas blue with the audi s5 and this huge single frame grill as well. So the grill here is actually larger, even though everything seems to be larger with the BMW. And also a very spectacular daytime running light. The Audi has a more, let's say, tech design, I would call it that way. A normal A5 already with normal LED. And then here, the S5 matrix LED is there. And optional, you can also get matrix LED with laser light also for the Audi. And here this, Ur Quattro citations of the very first Quattro model. This is closed here, but just a design clue. And the S5 always has sporty bumper, for example, here with the contrast in the lower part. The rear comparison is also super interesting. You can see once again, just like in the front, the Audi is stressing the width a little bit more and also Let's say builds a little bit flatter and once again has this more tech look in the light signature whereas the bmw is a little bit higher especially here in this area and appears slimmer and more has these sensual lines here from the tail lamps and fake exhaust alert for the outer crew fake exhaust police yet it goes through but the outer tip is fake and two pipes whereas more massive and sportier style for the audi these are four real exhaust so we have double the pipes and also real and then with the chrome so exhaust design wise the audi clearly wins it design wise it's really tricky i mean they're different you know different approaches i would call it which one is your favorite hmm i think the wider stance of the audi makes it a little bit you know just stronger and sportier. The length here, 4 meters 77 or 188 inches with the BMW 4 Series convertible or also the coupe, here is the M440i, with the accentuations here, the contrasting side mirrors and the M badge right here. 19 inch wheels in a very interesting style, contrasting blue brake calipers. This is a very sporty look, right? I love these two-tone wheels right here. Now, would you have guessed, by the way, that the BMW is actually a little bit longer? Well, it appears right here in this area because it also has some kind of a longer wheelbase, around eight centimeters or three to four inches longer here, the BMW. But what they have managed very, very well, I think, is here, the convertible roof, soon also to be opened. Here, look at that. It has this stretch that almost looks coupe alike really flat and you don't see any bar or something. We also have 19 inch wheels here for the Audi, like this, and then the S5 badge. And they also use contrasting colors here, the typical S chrome look, I would call it that way, also around the window. And here at the A pillar, looks really striking, especially in contrast to the blue. And here you can see also good integration of the convertible roof, but you can see this bar here, the last bar, a little bit more clearly than with the BMW. So roof integration, better with the BMW. 
here both with a very strong design line in this area and you can see it maybe from this angle that the Audi is just a little bit shorter. And now convertible roof opening test here with both vehicles. Thomas B, my cameraman, is in the other vehicle and then we'll simultaneously hit the button. I'll give him a sign for the let's go. So let's see which one is faster. Let's go! The race is on and let's see which one opens first. I think... Oh, this is really parallel. Come on, come on, come on! Let's go! Oh, this will be very close, I think. Yes, I think Thomas B won! But I was a little bit faster with the, uh, with the windows open uh, uh, here up, but that was really close, right? <laughs> And now one more perspective when both tops are opened. What a beautiful perspective, right? This is really lovely. Would you take the blue pill or the green pill? <laughs> Tell me in the comments. Ah, it's such a tough decision for today. Hmm. Yeah, already exterior wise, definitely. What about the interior and of course driving? Will the driving part today decide this one? Hmm. And now the favorite battle of the trunks. Let's open both here, the Audi and with the BMW. And the interesting thing here, first of all, you see here the opening of the BMW is a little bit shorter when we compare this one here. So this is th yeah, about 39 inches or about a meter. Whereas here with the Audi, we're here at 42 inches and more than a meter. So this is more flexible. So better opening for the Audi as for length, when you go to the middle part, not the way, same way in the outside, but the length, one meter is 10 or 43 inches. That is more or less the same with both. Once again, when you use the middle part here, slightly longer with the BMW, 44 inches or one meter 12. But here, this is when the roof can be opened and you have these edges right here, they're round. Then you can manual push it in and then you have the full capacity here, which is at 385 liters with the BMW and 380 liters, five liters less with the Audi. Here with the electronic function, that's the way. But when it is in the other setting, you know, so this original setting, then the Audi is at 320 liters, whereas the BMW at 300 liters. So the Audi over a little bit better as for the trunk. And also you do this electric function you don't have to close it manually. So let's say you have it in this position and then you're opening the roof from the front. It automatically goes back. Whereas with BMW, you always have to go to the back and manually put it back again. And it's, it's, it's also a security mechanism. So for example, when I have it, see this first aid kit here above that, and then I activate this one from the inside or from here, it squeezes it a little bit, but then it goes back again. And loading things through, possible for both, but here you see with the BMW a little bit limited how you know you can reach things through. And here you can see it a way wider opening for the Audi S5 convertible. Now to the interiors, both have seat belt reaches right here. Uh, looks a little bit more premium with the BMW, soon coming to that. But look at that here in the interior overview, clean and beautiful design, more, you know, yeah, a subtle design with the Audi right here. S-line steering wheel, perforated sides. Digital instruments, 12.3 inch, zoom more deals to that, and 10.1 inch touchscreen in the middle part. Since the facelift of the A5 series, just the touch, that's a little bit different with the BMW, but to me the coolest thing is, still with the manual climate, climate dials, and we soon have also more details to that. Here, in general, with the interior and the seats, you have some markets where you can get microfiber on the inside uh, for the normal sports seats and these are the optional integrated sports seats, S sports seats and <laughs> vents a little bit too loud. So these here would also be standard for the US but in general not too many non-animal skin options also not in the US. Here the wind deflector can be easily put out like this and the interesting thing here with the Audi is it has a shorter wheelbase than the BMW, but you have more space in the rear. I'm soon going to show you that as well. Let's directly hop over to the BMW, see how it plays out there. 
this is here also a seat belt reacher but you know with this chrome or galvanized feature a little bit more premium alike we can also put out the wind deflector like this easy solution and you see you don't have too much space left here after the driver's seat although we have the longer wheelbase that's a little bit astonishing the interior is more central i would say it's more like hey welcome home so it has more emotion to it whereas the audi interior as i said is a little more subtle more technology oriented but as for the tech the same 12.3 inch screen at least for the size here on the left side not as adaptive as in the audi and on the right side 10.25 inch so both actually same screen sizes left and right all digitalized nice matte wood interior right here so styling wise i would prefer the one of the bmw functionality wise the audi one is also really really good let's dig into the details but first of all as for the seating here these are not that sporty the seats we have in built here as for the surfaces mostly also animal skin in the us you can get a center tech with the 430i that would be my tip but not with the m440i seeking position here in the bmw 4 series convertible as the 440i it's less sporty than in the audi i would say although we have you know the integrated sports seats right there this changes of course a little bit but in general the seating position is a little bit more upright also if you compare this one by the way to bmw z4 the z4 is a little bit sportier it's still somewhat comfortable you can also drive this one long term but as i said this little bit more design oriented i would say whereas the audi is a little bit more functionality oriented the biggest difference is really that you can still have this control knob here in the lower part that you can also control the touch screen here from the lower part and not only with touch on the upper part steering wheel also with the manual control right here and it has this thicker m design definitely you can argue for both but the most crucial difference in steering will be while driving instruments yay here we go and counterclockwise rpm and i think well meanwhile i got used to it once again it's somewhat logical in a way that when you have this orientation and in the middle part you still have space for example for gps information when you have set these and here we have the head-up display which is always a nice option oh, heated steering wheel infotainment system here with the map data and pinch and zoom works quite well it's also responsive enough with the latest bmw ios and this is also then supporting not only Apple CarPlay but also Android Auto. The Apple CarPlay is also a good integration and the sound system here, the Harman Kardon sound system is really awesome and it also works perfectly when you have the open top. So yeah, that's a very lovely thing to do or to have. <laughs> yeah, there are a lot of other things to do definitely. <laughs> so then driving information here, for example, you can check the average consumption which is actually quite decent for for such a performance vehicle m440i and also here the sport space for example that you can see the g-force meter and so on and the rear view camera hard to get it flicker free on camera but it's not flickering in real life it's a good resolution and you also have this drawing from above and the highest trim what about the voice input usually quite good here at bmw and i usually don't use this activation where it's like hey bmw hey mercedes hey whatever i just click the button at the screen and then say what i want Drive me to Berlin. Let's see how quick that goes. Which one of the destinations shall oh, I select? Quick. Lower middle console here, open it, nice wood. And then here the inductive charging pad and Apple Carpet and Android Auto both only wireless. Hmm, I would like the option, wireless or cable, I think. So then here, adaptive cup holes, and then you have the shifting lever, which is doing a great job. Just pull it backwards here for the driving wheel here. You have to unlock it then for the driving mode and back once again for the reverse and here this is also good to have that you control something while driving and still these hotkeys then under the armrest well attached some more space and usb-c charging seating position in the audi s5 depending on the market two seating forms available the one that are already somewhat sporty but with separate head restraint and then these ones here that are also stand in the us with the integrated head restraint and to me actually first of all quite comfortable when you have the microfiber inside surface available in your market this will be even more comfortable because this one here the quilting of the animal skin surface looks fancy 
but it reduces the comfort actually especially long term but overall i think it's a good comfort sportiness compromise it feels a little bit sportier here the overall seating position than in the bmw and the steering wheel here with the manual control but very nicely done and a rather slim approach for the steering wheel and everything really very well here in your line of sight digital instruments in the audi s5 this is where audi is leading i think here the map integration all over the place just beautifully done you can also switch to views like this you are just actually more flexible i think you can also have a view like this for example and also the map just partially and very clear to read everything and if you like a more classic look in the virtual instruments you can change it here in the middle and then see here on the left side it changes here to the classic round gauges and this is yeah i think my favorite old school view then apple carplay integration like this here it's not really comparable as for the audio system because we do not have the optional audio system here in the audi but the option is also then very good here this is the carplay integration once again and the audi mmi looks like this everything done via touch meanwhile since the recent facelift the good thing is that the menu structure and so on is actually quite simple so you don't miss the central mmi knob so much actually it's also quite responsive but it's a thing maybe that some prefer the mmi knobs in the middle part to be able to control it especially while driving but as i said for a touch only solution this is actually fairly good and this is how it's supposed to be my favorite climate unit in the automotive industry clicking sound and it's just so simple straightforward way to go that's how it's done and i would love to see this one also in the future but more and more capacitive buttons are being used glad that these two vehicles here today still have great solutions for that and the lower middle console here with adaptive cup holders then we have the automatic shifting lever right here this is to open the roof and then some more space underneath here also with an inductive charging pad this will definitely go into the best of thomas in the rear seat <laughs> thomas in the rear seat when the wind deflector is still mounted yeah i just had to try that once at least rear seating comparison here in the audi let's take a look audi s5 convertible and of course when the roof is open it's really easier to get inside but what i want to show you is this is the seat that i would be driving and of course it's cramped somewhat or more or less but i can sit here for a shorter period of time and even better of course in the you know next to me here right here when we push the co-driver seat a little bit more to the front but definitely more space here in the audio you'll see it in direct comparison and here the integration of the head restraints is also very well done because in that way they are all the way low down and then i can push them up on demand and also have a yeah you know, actually quite comfortable seating position here so that you can drive this one here with four adults now the rear seat of the bmw here with an automatic function sliding to the front but with the audio you also have a, a practical button you can all and also so easily slide it but it wasn't necessary but here when i slide it backwards then here it uh, it gets really close and even too close so yeah that is not ideal for a very short period of time it would theoretically work but definitely astonishing longer wheelbase but shorter amount of legroom here in the bmw so usage of space is not as good as in the audi the head restraints are also not that well integrated they always stand upright like this but the seating position itself yeah i think also the the rear um you know the rear area is a little bit more upright so definitely more comfortable in the audi this more or less only three tall adult proof because you can sit you know behind this seat when you move it a little bit more forward four tall adults for a shorter period of time only engines both have an acceleration figure of 4.9 seconds to one kilometers or 62 miles an hour but BMW is using the inline six cylinder here for the M performance model for the M440i. 380 horsepower for the three liter inline six cylinder. And AJ, our engine expert, would say inline six is way to go. It's actually the best engine. Whereas here with the Audi, a three liter V6, so in this V building form, then here with 350 horsepower, so 30 horsepower less, but nevertheless, same acceleration figure and both come with all-wheel drive with a rear wheel bias each that's how it's supposed to be the classic all-wheel drive thing Look, 
welcome to Thomas's Comparison Driving Lounge and we put the BMW M440i as a convertible here in the Sport Plus mode and heading on to the motorway. Both have an acceleration peak of 4.9 seconds but it will play out a little bit differently also sound wise and from the characteristics and so on. This will be super interesting here now from 40 kilometers an hour to whatever. Let's see. Let's go. Well, that's 200 kilometers an hour or 125 miles an hour. Woo! Nice, nice, nice. And I really love that inline six cylinder sound. What, what a gem of an engine, as AJ always says. And we are in the convertible and here at really high speeds, of course, some wind noise, but at the moment, 150 kilometers an hour. Yeah, I mean, that's really fast and still relatively silent in here. So these new acoustic surf tops are doing such a great job only at really high speeds you still have differences in noise insulation between the convertible and the coupe and when we drop it here to like 120 kilometers an hour so like you know 70 miles an hour then it's quite windy outside at, the, at this moment uh, here but it's really relatively silent in here and you wouldn't say like oh I'm in a convertible I hear so much wind noise so that's not gonna happen really really silent and when you hear at lower speeds it's almost like this cannot be an open top you know vehicle so really fan of these new soft tops well insulated and also they're keeping the weight down and so on and so on and once again this engine here feels so lively all-wheel drive here still with the rear wheel bias so we're still getting more push from the rear than we're getting pulled from the front and they just remain uh, you know with this bias steering mm. It has been improved, I think. So as we started with the all new 3 series generation, I was criticizing the steering feel a lot. Meanwhile, well, I got used to it a little bit and they also improved it a little bit. Here, this is a little bit too loose, I think, in this very you know, low degree area, something that could be still improved. Sound here inside the tunnel. <laughs> uh, I, I just love this engine. It's one of my favorite engines overall because it has a nice sound, not too exaggerated. It has great performance here then with a 380 horsepower trim. At the same time, if you keep it rather steady and drive it, let's say, normally without these acceleration tests and so on, the consumption results are actually still quite decent at this power point. Around 9 liters and 100 kilometers, 26 mpg US, 31 mpg UK, something like this. You can easily score with having fun, but not exaggerating it on the throttle. And that's, I think, a good result overall. Here now, lane change, you see here, very good control. Suspension is so just superb. We have the adaptive suspension by BMW built in here. What a lovely suspension. It's, yeah, it's just very, very good period so you don't need anything else actually in a normal driving mode by the way the steering is too loose i think so either you know if you prefer that then go into sport mode when it's a little bit stiffer then um yeah but you can also have this individualized modes so um probably would, would, would go for that um so at some point you configure individual and then for example you have like a normal driving mode but then have the stiffer steering here from that sports mode. So this is actually all possible. Back in the tunnel with open top. Woo! Woo! <laughs> uh, it's just so much fun and let's accelerate it out using the shifting pedals. Oh my God, this is lovely. Yeah, now yeah, I can drive this thing open top 150 kilometers an hour. Of course, the wind noise are picking up now, not that pleasant, but it's still quite okay. You see, look at my hair. I mean, yes, it's curly season at the moment, <laughs> I know. Um, but still, I mean, driving so fast on the motorway, my hair is hardly moving. That is incredible. Of course, I have this manual, normal wind deflector mount that is doing such a great job, but 
there's not much wind coming in here at all. This is one of the best results we had ever in a convertible here. Wow, they really worked on the wind flow and aerodynamics of this thing. Incredible. And when I'm going like here, cruise control, 120 kilometers an hour, so like 70 miles an hour, you can easily cruise with that on the motorway. So this is what I love about mid-size convertibles here, like the you know, Mercedes C-Class, BMW 4 Series convertible or the Audi A5 convertible. You can go on the motorway with that thing and drive it open. Yes, of course, you can do it with any convertible, but the thing, the thing is in a comfortable manner. And here when you go like, which is also total okay, highway speed, like one kilometer, 60 miles an hour, this is so relaxing. And this is also one of the greatest things about this car. Wow. You can enjoy it everywhere with open top at any time in any season. This is so great. I love this vehicle. I can just say that. The BMW Z4 is also great, definitely, and has more driving fun. No doubt about that. Difference to the Z4 here, if you think about, because they come close in price, this one here, as it stands here, with all the extras, all the equipment, almost 90K, 90,000 euros or dollars, that's ridiculous. Yes, of course, it's a top trim M, uh, M440i. Still ridiculous pricing, you know? So expensive. So I would really think about maybe then rather going for the Z4 in this case then, because it's just more driving fun. And, but the thing is, you know, this one, of course, has the rear bench. The seating position is more upright than in the Z4. So getting in and out is easier. But this is reasonable seating front comfort, I would say. But I found actually that the Z4 is not less comfortable because it has these integrated sports seats. And to me, they're a little bit better even. You will have to find out for yourself. So a small, you know, sidekick here comparing it with the Z4. And what's also cool is that we have the cruise control with the adaptive function and also the side lane keeping assist. And this is so smoothly and flawlessly working. So let me put it in the comfort mode. And I had it even in on the motorway in the construction lane. And this was keeping here, keeping the car in the lane. So also great as for the system systems. So yeah, I mean, still a bummer that BMW does not offer so many animal skin alternatives as for the seat surfaces. Yes, we know the 430i comes with SensorTech in the US, so that would be my tip to go for, the 430i with SensorTech seats. But besides that, it's really tough to find anything to criticize. Yeah, the price, okay, I told that. But other than that, really tough to find anything to criticize with this vehicle. They really have a great package. So, what else is missing? Driving up in an agile way. Agile whale? What did I say there? In an agile way? Up Autogefühl's peak. Let's go. <laughs> sorry about that. <laughs> or should I say, sorry, not sorry? <laughs> ah, yeah. You know, I'm absolutely open to electric vehicles. That being said, that's still cool. <laughs> I just love riding convertibles. This is, this is actually one of the reasons I did this channel. This is Autogefühl. This is car feeling. That's a direct translation. And this is so much fun. Sport Plus mode once again, now driving up Autogefühl's peak. Can't stop smiling. Shifting down. Ah. Just enjoy this together with me. Yes, the steering could be a little bit less vague, I would say. It's good, but it's not perfect. That's better with the Audi, definitely, the steering feel. Other than that, wow, the balance of this vehicle is awesome. And once again, the engine, you can even have it in a, in a higher gear than expected and still have this sonorous six-cylinder somewhat you know subtle growl here for example when i'm in the, like when i'm in a higher gear and then ah this is just lovely same time shifting down and then bites again here we go rear end you know kicking a little bit around just as it's supposed to be 
perfect. And you literally feel how smooth this engine is operating. Now in a very tight turn, tight turn. <laughs> Lovely. What an awesome vehicle. How much fun is this? And yes, the M440i is great, especially for this engine. But, you know, pretty expensive. So to get the best price performance deal, the 430i, I think it is. But ah, that's six cylinder. <laughs> well, but what about the Audi? Now the Audi will put here via the drive select in the dynamic mode. It also switches the shifting mode to S and then we do the very same acceleration from 40 kilometers. And let's just see, does it feel differently? Does it behave differently? And how does it sound? So we'll wait for a safe passage to the motorway. Let's see behind this truck there. Let the other car pass first. Now it's time from 40. Let's go. And that's 200. <laughs> I'm not sure why the why the uh, voice activation went on via let's go, but yeah, that's one of the signs of these modern cars, yeah, something that's not old school anymore. But here, good noise insulation also at higher speeds, 180 kilometers an hour. How stable this car on the road and very precise here from the steering input. I really like that. Great acceleration as well. Sound rather subtle, I would say. Is it also, you know, it's the same theme than the rest of the interior. It's more drawn back, not that emotional, rather functional. Did we ever have that have, have during the Autobahn acceleration, the voice uh, recognition system went on? Yeah, that's a little bit annoying, that, isn't it? But that's the life on Autogefühl, most authentic approach here always for you guys. So, also this acoustic soft top here, really great performance when you something with a horn coming here or is it no oh, I think we're on the bridge yeah so when you're driving at autobahn speeds here you hardly realize you are in the convertible it could also be the coupe great insulation this suspension does feel differently than in the BMW mm, you somehow feel as if the car would be let's say a little bit better balanced here now in the tunnel, let's lower the window for the sound, shift back with the pedals. One more time. Yeah, quite nice, but I think engine sound-wise and how even, you know, if the speed is actually, or how quick they are, that's kind of the same. The BMW inline six cylinder somehow is more engaging. Sound-wise, also from this characteristic, here what the Audi V6 does better when you are, for example, in the normal driving mode, let's say yeah, here the auto driving mode, let's switch to that, also normal D shifting mode. When you're just running straight, it feels kind of smoother in a way that you don't feel anything from the engine at all. And also suspension wise, you feel that the car is a little bit more floating, but at the same time in a little stiffer way. That's very interesting. So that's really a theme about this car. It's so interesting how they have the two different approaches. Both are coming so close. By the way, also in the price. This one here also with the full equipment, 90,000 euros or dollars, which is also ridiculous. But I mean, so many technical specs are equal and also the price is equal. But then again, the car, cars do feel quite differently indeed. That's so astonishing indeed. So I would really say here the Audi, more this, you know, tech focus, not too much playing around, making it, let's say, like as perfect as possible. 
Whereas the BMW, from the interior stuff, and also from how it behaves while driving, has more, to me, the little bit more emotional approach. Indeed, how, I mean, this is really cool, how it accelerates and how it drives, also really great. I feel the BMW has a little bit more rear wheel bias from the all-wheel drive. Mm, Steering-wise, this one is better here. More precise steering feeling. But then again, how the engine reacts with the different axles and the, and the all-wheel drive, that's a little bit cooler with the BMW. Ooh, this is going to be really close, guys. Need to drive it, drive it further here. And acceleration with open top. And I can still drive open 160 kilometers an hour, but I mean, I think it was a little bit more silent in the BMW 4 Series convertible, especially at these higher speeds here. And also the, the wind that is coming inside the cabin is a little bit higher. Um, so let's move it down here to about 120 kilometers an hour, which would be more, let's say, realistic motorway speed. So, yeah, 120. I mean, before that, this one here was among the most silent and, you know, less wind turbulence having convertibles on the market, but, wow. And this is still a good result here at 120 kilometers an hour or 70 miles now, but the BMW was so extremely good in that respect that it really tops this one. So, when you ask me, 120 kilometers an hour, 70 miles an hour on the motorway, would easily drive that with the 4 Series convertible here, it's okay, it works. But for a more comfortable long-term experience on the motorway, I would even drive maybe a little bit slower than that. The one thing that really, really stands out with this vehicle, and we'll soon see it when we drive up the Autogefühl's Peak, is the steering, which is so progressive and it feels natural but direct at the same time. You're always super much in control, so I would just love this steering characteristic in the BMW. That's something, really. I mean, here also, slalom characteristics is, wow, it is phenomenal. The balance of this vehicle is great. So, suspension-wise, and also the little bit shorter wheelbase than in the BMW really helps this vehicle. Some crackles and pops from the exhaust when you are in the dynamic mode and S shifting mode and you decelerate them, that's also a really nice emotional thing to have. I mean, both of these cars here today are so much fun. They are indeed bringing back the fun, bringing back the joy, letting us forget of all these, you know, disasters in the automotive industry with what I said initially, touch screens like from here to here capacitive buttons all over the place. No six cylinders, no eight cylinders, they throw it all away. Here you can still get the good old stuff. Yeah, you may be already annoyed by a voice input that has been activated when you just want to show an acceleration to a big crowd, but yeah, <laughs> other than that, these cars you still offer great old school car enthusiast stuff. That's why I love both vehicles indeed. The, the very last discipline for today is still to come with driving up Autogefühl's Peak. But before that, let's take a look at the assistance systems, driver assist. You can also activate this lane keeping assist, see how intrusive it is or not. So let's take a look at here. Head up displays, by the way, also an option. It's not in this very vehicle, but it's also an option for the A5 in general. Let's see now when the bend is going right. If it's not, nah, really had to correct there. So, of course, it's not that intrusive then. That's the uh, advantage. So, a little bit less active here in the Audi. Let's see here the left corner now. Yeah, this is being done better now. So, the lane keeping assist, a little bit more, let's say, aggressive with the BMW, but you can also deactivate it at any time. Both good result as for the assistance systems in the BMW. In meanwhile, seems a little bit more elaborated in this respect. But now, that's what we all have been waiting for. Might this decide the verdict, or at least my verdict for today? The Edge are driving up Autogefühl's peak. Welcome to the tunnel. 
Woo! Yeah. That also sounds very good in here, right? I mean, the exhaust look better from the outside. Nice, 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 nice. I love this tunnel, especially, you know, it has such a good resonance, definitely. And now it's about to decide the fate of this review. Going up out of Fruits Peak. Crack, crack, crack. So, let's go. Was that from us? Yes. Second gear, shifting back. Ah, oh, lovely. Yes. In the sports mode also, the shifting is more hammered in. Oh, this. When I'm shifting down myself, then there's also more exhaust sound coming. And I think also then more fun from the BMW. So the crackles and pops here in the manual mode are actually better now. A little bit more silent until we pass these houses. Wow. Great steering input, this is so great. One of the best steerings there is out there. And also here, when you are in a higher gear and accelerate, still no problem with these six cylinders. It's a five series coming, so and then when you shift back to second gear, you immediately have this very good throttle input, pedestrians, tension, and oh, the Mayo Mayo Jaune. <laughs> Now, hammer it out. Yes. Oh, so much fun here as well. Oh, it's getting tougher and tougher to decide. This is also so great in the handling. Now it gets really close here. Yes. <laughs> oh my God, this is also so much fun. I'm really puzzled. So. I mean, if you compare also this one here to any other vehicle, you would say like this is so much more fun than so many stuff. <sighs> but then again, the BMW, did it hook me more a little bit maybe emotionally? <sighs> so tough. What about you? What's your choice? So if you could take one home right now, this one or this one? Tell me in the comments. <sighs> I really don't know. I don't know. It's it's so tough. Look at these vehicles. And you've seen the review and you've seen how much fun I had. I mean, the segment in general is so great because you can have it as a as a first daily driver, these, these vehicles and still have so much fun. Exterior wise, I think it's just a matter of taste, definitely. Interior, the thing is, the BMW is more central, the Audi more factual, I would say, but it has more space. It's shorter vehicle, shorter wheelbase, but it has more space on the interior and also better usable trunk and reaching through. So like the logical everyday driver and the head decision is the Audi. But if you've looked at the driving part. I don't know exactly why. Emotionally, I think I'm with the BMW. Just kind of hooked me more emotionally. Although I always know like, you know, the Audi is the more perfect vehicle, I would say. But here, the inline six cylinder of BMW, ah, it's just like, just something, you know. I don't know exactly if it's just the engine or something else. I think I have to, think about this for for even longer time but as i said first you know impulse of me would be emotional this had this same price so many same features but they do feel quite differently as you've seen in the review i really have to think about this even more but that's so far my verdict this has been so much fun <laughs>